Welcome back, mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. We are going to be talking more today about how a ketogenic diet is an effective anti-cancer strategy and the foundation of metabolic therapy for cancer. And up until this point, we have talked about how by cutting off glucose here, we're going to shut off the ability for the overactive glycolysis system called the Warburg metabolism is not going to be able to metabolize glucose to make lactate, which is the end product of aerobic glycolysis, but it's also not going to have the ability to produce energy for itself. It's also not going to create the acidic tumor microenvironment. It's not going to activate several of the downstream metabolic pathways, which then lead to further tumor growth. We've also talked about how by lowering glucose, it helps with lowering insulin, which which is a very pro-growth hormone that when we lower blood glucose, insulin will go down and then tumor growth should also follow. We've touched upon how by not overeating and by being in calorie restriction that we also will activate AMP kinase, which then can help relieve the pseudo hypoxia that is in play to some degree and reprogram this Warburg metabolism back to normal metabolism. But what I found when going through papers recently really shocked me and I wanna dive into that today. So to recap, we know that being on a ketogenic diet is going to help lower blood sugar. It's going to help lower insulin and help with insulin resistance. This is one of the main benefits to a ketogenic diet for cancer in particular, but for several other conditions as well. We also know that being on a ketogenic diet decreases serum insulin-like growth factor one levels, which is an important driving factor for cancer. This study showed that a ketogenic diet reduced not only the obesity, but also insulin, a very pro-growth hormone, but even insulin-like growth factor one by a whopping 43%. But still, this is not the shocking piece of evidence that I found that a ketogenic diet is a powerful tool for our cancer-fighting endeavors. Believe it or not, the last slide that I showed you was this slide cut in half. And the other very important piece that we have not talked about yet so far is that ketosis itself, the ketone bodies, beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetone, acetoacetate, all have direct anti-cancer effects. So let's dive into the research here. The ketone body beta-hydroxybutyrate has traditionally been thought of as simply a metabolic substrate that replaces glucose during a ketogenic diet, fasting, or exercise. However, the effects of increased ketones go beyond simple considerations of energy availability. In vitro investigations demonstrated that beta-hydroxybutyrate is able to recapitulate in part the in vivo effects of a full ketogenic diet. This is really exciting because what this potentially means is that you may not have to be in a such strict ketogenic diet with such a low, low glucose level and a low carbohydrate level on your diet, as long as your ketone levels are actually high. This suggests that the ketone bodies themselves possess antitumor effects and that perhaps the effect of a ketogenic diet are mediated, at least in some part, by the ketone bodies themselves. Additional evidence for this comes from the data showing that ketone supplementation can enhance the effect of a ketogenic diet and may even be more effective in some diseases when used alone. Ultimately, beta-hydroxybutyrate has the capacity to modulate the epigenetic environment within cells, which may contribute to the beneficial effect of a ketogenic diet and calorie restriction. So in this paper, it says ketone supplementation decreases tumor cell viability and prolonged survival of mice with metastatic cancer. Dietary ketone supplementation with BD, which stands for 1,3-butanadiol, and KE, ketone ester, prolonged survival in mice with systemic metastatic cancer by 51 and 69% respectively. Ketone administration elicited anti-cancer effects in vitro and in vivo independent of glucose levels and calorie restriction. This is very exciting. The use of supplemental ketone precursors as cancer treatment should be further investigated in animal models to determine potential for future clinical use. Metabolic reprogramming induced by ketone bodies diminished pancreatic cancer cachexia. We observed reduced glycolytic flux in tumor cells upon treatment with ketone bodies. Ketone bodies also diminished glutamine uptake. This is also very exciting. So not only does it have direct anti-cancer effect and it reduces the amount of glucose used by tumor cells, it also diminished the amount of glutamine uptake as well. It also overall decreased ATP content and survival of multiple pancreatic cancer cell lines while inducing apoptosis or programmed cell death. A decreased level of C-MYC, which is a cancer oncogene, a metabolic master regulator, and its recruitment on glycolytic gene promoters, which is basically means it's shutting down increases in gene expression related to glycolysis. So it helps drive the Warburg effect, which is in part responsible for the metabolic phenotype in tumor cells. Ketone body induced intracellular metabolic 
reprogramming in pancreatic cancer cells also leads to a significantly diminished cachexia in cell line models. So this is pretty cool because when we talked about ketosis in the in the prior videos is that when the ketones are made in the liver, they are going to go to the cells that have healthy mitochondria and the cells that have these healthy mitochondria can use these ketone bodies for energy while we're at the same time starving out and killing the cancer cells. So cancer cachexia, which is a big problem with cancer patients because all of their glucose and calories and glutamine is getting shuttled away towards the cancer itself. It starves the rest of the body, the healthy tissue from vital nutrients. So what we're doing is we're replacing some of those vital nutrients back in the form of energy through ketones that helps prevent this metabolic kind of wasting away of the cancer patient. So the role of glucose and ketone bodies in the metabolic control of brain cancer. And it says that ketone bodies are proposed to reduce stromal inflammatory activities while providing normal brain cells with a non-glycolytic high energy substrate ketone bodies. Our results in a mouse astrocytoma, which is a brain cancer, suggest that malignant brain tumors are potentially manageable with dietary therapies that reduce glucose and elevate ketone bodies. And that would be also known as a ketogenic diet. Whereas, as we talked about, maybe supplemental ketones could be very powerful as an additional strategy within the this overall treatment modality. As you can see, in the highest levels of glucose, blood glucose, you're going to have the highest levels of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. And as those glucose levels drop in the bloodstream on a ketogenic diet or with fasting, these blood glucose levels will drop and the IGF-1 will also drop. And then as the IGF-1 levels drop, you can see that the tumor actually shrinks because this IGF-1 is actually in some degree, in addition with insulin and other things like, like high blood glucose, is driving cancer growth and worsening of the situation for that cancer patient. So ketone bodies induce unique inhibition of tumor cell proliferation or growth and enhance the efficacy of anti-cancer agents. We previously found that acetoacetate, in this case, we're talking about acetoacetate. In the last couple of papers, we've talked about beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is one of the main ketones found when your body creates ketones in the liver. And acetoacetate is one of the other major ketones when you're in ketosis, and it inhibits the growth of human colon cancer cell line. We report that here that similar results for several other cancer cell lines, including ovarian, cervical, and and breast cancer. We found that sodium acetoacetate does not kill cancer cells, but rather blocks their growth. In this, it says that acetate induces growth arrest in colon cancer cells through modulation of mitochondrial function. Acetate was found to reduce proliferation of both cell lines under normal oxygen and hypoxic conditions, as well as reducing glycolysis. It was found that, and remember, glycolysis is another word for the Warburg metabolism in cancer. It is also found to increase both oxygen consumption and ROS levels, reactive oxygen species. Under hypoxic conditions, reduced cell growth and proliferation was maintained in the HT29 cell line, but no longer observed in the HCT116 cell line. So what this is saying is that although the growth of the cancer was found to be halted in both hypoxic or low oxygen cancer cells and in normal oxygen levels of cancer cells, in the hypoxic conditions, it was found that there was not as much of an effect. However, this is when they're basically giving ketone bodies to cancer cells without putting them on a ketogenic diet and reducing the blood sugar. So I do think that this is somewhat skewed in terms of the understanding of what the ramifications of this are when it's truly a ketogenic not diet, not just adding ketones to cancer cells. So this is another paper in 2022 that says that colorectal cancer growth is reduced by ketone beta hydroxybutyrate. And I think this is what was really shocking to me. And also, I think it could produce a lot of hope and also could relieve some stress from the cancer patient who wants to be on metabolic therapy, but maybe is struggling with the idea of a very strict ketogenic diet because they're saying that metabolite supplementation can be used to mediate tumor inhibitory effects similar to those induced by a ketogenic diet. So although I don't necessarily think that I would go on a whatever diet while doing ketones as an addition to my cancer therapy, for people who just absolutely cannot do a low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet, this could be some way to augment and get some of the effects of a ketogenic diet. However, I think what we're seeing is that the gestalt here is that you need to be calorie restricted first and foremost. You need to be increasing your ketones, likely through a ketogenic diet, at least some degree of a ketogenic diet. You may not have to be without adding additional ketones to your diet, you may not have to be in such a low GKI by the diet itself by having such a ultra strict ketogenic diet, but by adding the ketone bodies in particularly beta hydroxybutyrate as a supplement, this could give us an upper hand against cancer.
This is just a very busy slide about how a ketogenic diet has several metabolic effects, several of which we've talked about in the past. But in particular, this highlights that beta-hydroxybutyrate has an anti-inflammatory effect. It blocks TNF-alpha, which stands for tumor necrosis factor alpha. It has other downstream effects on hypoxia-related genes, including HIF-1-alpha. So it's a very powerful tool in our tool bag that we have. Now, again, if you're on a ketogenic diet, a strict ketogenic diet, you're going to be making your own endogenous beta-hydroxybutyrate. And if you're using ketogenic diets for weight loss, there'll probably be very little benefit from being on exogenous or supplemental ketones because those are going to be providing extra energy. And if your goal is to lose weight or improve your diabetic situation, I don't think that giving extra ketones would be helpful for you at all because you'd be adding energy to this equation instead of trying to subtract from the energy you already have stored as fat. But as as a cancer patient, or maybe as an Alzheimer's patient, or as someone who's dealing with a neurodegenerative disease, adding extra ketones would give us the extra benefit of being in deep ketosis without having to be in deep ketosis. This is another paper showing that a ketogenic diet, and in particular beta-hydroxybutyrate, this is what this BHB stands for, is activating this HCAR2 protein, which is then halting tuberogenesis, in particular during colorectal cancer. This is another study out of nature showing that beta-hydroxybutyrate by itself can suppress colorectal cancer. And that's through this pathway here. There's several other pathways, including by decreasing inflammation, et cetera. And then beta-hydroxybutyrate inhibits phenotypes of prostate cancer. Beta-hydroxybutyrate induces cell death within lung cancer. This is studied in many different cancers. And again, in some of these papers where it's just studying beta-hydroxybutyrate, it's literally only giving them supplemental beta-hydroxybutyrate or putting them on supplemental ketone bodies, such as BHB. It's not putting them on a ketogenic diet and then adding these things. It would definitely have a synergistic effect of being on a low glycemic load or a ketogenic diet, which is low in carbohydrates, which is cutting off cancer's major fuel source glucose. And then the ketone bodies, it's going to help reduce the inflammation associated with cancer. It's going to help reduce the body's ability to pathologically increase glycolysis related proteins and enzymes in those steps. It's going to help by shutting off hypoxia inducible factor one alpha. It's going to help shut down some of these pro-growth pathways such as mTOR. It's going to help activate AMP kinase, which helps also shut down hypoxia inducible factor one and helps with metabolic reprogramming. And believe it or not, beta hydroxybutyrate within cancer cells will increase increase their reactive oxygen species, which if we do everything right with the metabolic therapies, we have left them vulnerable to oxidative stress because we're cutting off. If you remember right back in the videos about a ketogenic diet and decreasing the amount of substrate for the PPP, and the PPP is very important for the production of glutathione. So if we're cutting off its ability to produce ATP, if we're cutting off its ability to produce glutathione, when we add beta hydroxybutyrate into the mix, it's going to help add oxidative stress to the cancer cells in particular, not the healthy cells. And it's going to to give us another unfair advantage against cancer. It's also been shown that beta-hydroxybutyrate by itself outside of a ketogenic diet can actually help chemotherapies work better. And these two studies is looking at oxaliplatin, which is a platinum-based chemotherapeutic that is used in colon cancer. Both of these studies are done in colorectal cancer. So as you can see, a calorie-restricted ketogenic diet is a very powerful intervention against cancer. Again, to recap, it's going to lower cancer's main energy substrate, glucose. It's going to help shut off the Warburg effect. It's going to help shut off the ability to produce nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, and glutathione for cancer cells. It's going to help lower insulin-like growth factor 1 and insulin, two very pro-growth hormones, which is going to downstream shut down CMYK and mTOR and help with metabolic reprogramming by decreasing the pseudohypoxia that is induced by a calorie surplus diet by having a deficiency of NAD. Beta-hydroxybutyrate will decrease inflammation, which drives cancer. It's going to help decrease glucose consumption and glutamine consumption, and it's going to help shut down several gene products associated with cancer. As you can see, this is a very powerful strategy. A combination of a ketogenic diet, exogenous or supplemental ketones, intermittent fasting is a very powerful foundation within metabolic therapy and giving anyone an edge against cancer. If you find these videos are valuable, please like, subscribe to these videos, share them with friends and family who are dealing with cancer. I really want this information to get out so that anyone can be helped by this information. Until next time.